Hi, welcome everyone. Um, my name is Sakina and I'm here from Wish and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about our marketplace, what we do and how we use shoppable videos. All right, so how we use shoppable videos and merchandising to appeal to our international user base. Um, I work in business development and I've been with Wish for the last two years. Um, for some of you who may not, may not have heard of Wish or don't really know what we do, I want to start off by showing uh, you guys our advertisement that we rolled out beginning of last year. Um, Matthew, I'd ask you to please play the ad. All right, um, so Wish is a San Francisco in 2010 founded e-commerce platform. We're a marketplace and we have our mission to make bargains fun and discoverability easy. Um, maybe you've noticed something in this advertisement, we showcased products, we had catchy video, catchy music to it, but we did actually not include any dialogue. I'll get back to that in a minute. Um, we have our four main USPs at Wish Marketplace, which is we're a mobile first company. So everything we do at Wish is to optimize for our mobile user. Um, discoverability comes first. Um, we have our products that are displayed to our consumers in a personalized feed. And we actually have the majority of consumers buying products at Wish um, through discoverability and not through search. And then the last is entertaining. So we're very known from consumer side on our app to be super entertaining, involving games, gifts, um, login bonuses that they can acquire in order to continue shopping on Wish. We have 24 monthly active users with 900,000 products sold daily. Um, yeah, so back to that advertisement. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to appeal to a large consumer base, um, an international market, since we serve plus 60 countries worldwide. The e-commerce opportunity for us does not end by just the country you're located to or the region, but we really try to engage our merchants to sell worldwide, and that includes different international markets with different international approaches, cultures, and languages. Here in the snapshot, you can see just some of our largest markets and how they are um, separated by. So with this international expansion, a lot of challenges come with it. How do you talk to your customers? How do you engage merchants to add products that might be interesting in other areas and regions? And it's really about finding that common ground with your customers on our app. So Wish makes it pretty simple for merchants to sell on our platform. So we have a single sign-in um, marketplace, so merchants do not have to open up different accounts to serve into different countries and to sell into different countries, and there's no need for multiple accounts. Again, what we really try to make uh, understand to our merchants is that we're a discovery-first platform. So everything we do in our app, we engage merchants also to adapt that kind of visual as well. So this Wish app, as you can see here on this snapshot, is nothing what Wish looked like a year ago and two years or three years ago. Um, we made sure to keep the discovery first, definitely included in the app, but also focusing on deals and merchandising. Again, this is the playful way that we catch customers in terms of engaging with your products, seeing how they might work, and getting the best deal possible um, for them on our app. Right, so we believe that video really helps in engaging our customers, and we encourage merchants to use that as well. We do have a marketplace with 60 plus countries. We actually offer automatic listing translations to our merchants as well, and everything can be done from one single platform. Still, there are some problems when you try to sell a product into a different market, where maybe the residence is not the same as in with your local market. And we really encourage merchants to use videos for that purpose. Again, here's an example. Yeah, so we have a product here. This is a screenshot of a product that's sold on Wish. 
Um, you have the product image here. Okay, we left out the description, but I think even without the description, it's a bit hard to tell what to do with that product, how it comes to use, and is that a product I'm actually interested in. Again, that's how we bring videos into the mix. Matthew, I'd ask you to play the next video, please. Right, so here you can see the product in action, first not really knowing what it is, and then discovering that this is actually a pretty cool gadget, something fun that you can give to someone that has an AirPod case and would like to clean it. Again, this is really hard to showcase through product pictures, and that's why we really encourage to use videos just to showcase how to use products, what they can be used for, is it a toy, is it a hobby, is it something that you have to assemble, and again, how you can bring that to use. Right, a second video is here. So this is the <laughs> a lemon squeezer. Also maybe hard to portray when you just have those pictures shown. And what we're trying to do here is really transcend language barriers. We're trying to, to, to talk to a consumer base that is maybe outside of your region and that really does not understand really what to do with that product. Again, we're really focused on gadgets here, which is a great category, but also in terms of fashion, for example, and the high returns that is known in the fashion categories. Videos can really help and showcase to your customers what that product might look like on them itself. We've seen a lot of positive impact, including videos, um, and the same goes to our merchants. So be it return rate, conversion rates, but especially engaging the customers and keeping them on our app a bit longer than maybe attended. Right, so we're trying to appeal to this global audience, and we have all these countries enabled for our merchants. We handle all the logistical parts of it. We handle everything that goes with expanding internationally, and we even have videos as an option for our merchants. But e-commerce world and the sphere is very, very difficult to navigate. And it's really hard for a company, no matter the size, but the bigger, the harder, to really navigate what is changing. And if you look into the macroeconomics of just the e-commerce landscape, we have consumers that are changing weekly and they're more and more interested in engaging content. They want to be included. They want to have an experience that they can emerge in. And they really want to have something they can use so they can share with their friends and family. Again, we're trying to bring together our USPs of being discoverable, playful, gamified, and then having some cool products that we like to showcase to our consumers. So we thought of a concept, and that's the world of Wish. This is a project, a pop-up shop, that we actually launched last fall. Again, touching up again on our advertisement where you saw the girl fall into the loop and then discover a whole world of quirky, fun, pro fun products that she can find. We actually created a space um, last, last year in November in London where we rented a whole building and we created a room for each kind of product category themed around different ideas. So here you see screenshots of the room. So on the left, for example, is the Museum of Bad Gifts. So we did an online survey on our Wish app and we kind of had our users um, comment, test and rate products. And that's how we put together this product, uh, this product room on the left. On the right is our fluffy room that we, we uh, co-sponsored with Klarna together, and we created a sofa with teddy bears, also all sold on Wish. So all products that we showcased through several days last year all had a tag with a QR code, and this was an open space where walk-by customers could come in, consumers could come in, but we actually flew a lot of different influencers as well into this space for them to create content, to um, create videos and pictures and kind of showcase to their audience what products can be found on Wish. Other two rooms, on the left, for example, we showcase our top 50 products sold in the month of November in 2022. And on the right, that was our bride-to-be bridal shower um, room with also fun and quirky products. Again, we work super closely with our merchants. So these products are actually from merchants that sell on Wish that account managers all over Europe work together with in order to place these products and make them make sense in the rooms that we wanted to create and see. So looking forward, we have videos, we are trying to emerge, bringing the brick and mortar together with physical products, showcasing our products in different ways to our consumers. Again, this is super important for us also to include that in our app. So we have different merchandising modules that we offer to merchants as well. 
Um, again, for it to be a, a fun experience, we have different games. Also here, we include our merchants, we include products, and especially videos into those games. Um, one of this game, for example, is Blitz Buy on the right. So this Wheel of Fortune that you see um, actually launched in 2015. So since 2015, customers on Wish enjoy this game. They can add bonus points, they can win points, they can use them again and spend them when they shop on Wish. Then merchandising is something that we're relaunching and revamping now on our Wish app as well. So again, tying in those real in-life experiences um, with marketing initiatives that we're doing, we bring merchandising also to our apps. So merchants have the opportunity to again showcase to a very broad and global audience their products. And we try to adjust this in terms of what region you're selling to. So again, usually in Europe, in winter time, or if you sell seasonal products, you can only sell or you probably only see certain seasonal products working well. And we have a merchandising calendar for our customers and for our merchants where they can include their products in every single month of the year. So in winter time, we have, for example, a January summer sale, and that is the supporter markets of Australia and Brazil. And on the top, for example, we have European markets or maybe a winter sale where the weather is a bit colder, where merchants can place their products. So again, we try to, we try to provide a variety of different options for merchants to tap into those global markets and make sure that they can sell their products all year around. I want to finish off by these three pillars. Um, so these are the three pillars that are the most important for us at Wish. And we really do believe that, for example, including shoppable videos or Wish clips, how we use it, used to say, um, really helps us with these three pillars. And that's driving and improving our consumer experience, um, making sure that our consumer is having fun, can find the products they enjoy, can share those products easily with their friends, and also have the opportunity to come and see their products in real life deepening our merchant relationships. So again, for all our merchandising and marketing initiatives, we work super closely with our merchants and make sure that all their products are being taken in consideration for anything that we have planned this year. And then our operational excellence. So all of this can only be done if we improve our operations. And that means from a logistical standpoint on, from a tax standpoint on, from anything that includes um, merchants and products being shipped internationally and reaching a global audience. Thank you so much. <laughs> that was a quick snapshot of what we do at Wish. <laughs> There's a lot of more exciting things coming this year, um, but make sure to visit us at our booth. I'll be there. Colleagues of mine will be there as well. Feel free to reach out. And if you have any questions, I'm happy to take them live or else you can, of course, come to our booth and ask them in person. Thank you. Um, yeah, thank you for the presentation. Hi, I'm Hi. Sylvia. I'm um, from Lisa, and Lisa offers live stream shopping directly out of the videos. So my question would be, have you thought to extend your experience with Wish with such a tool where you have really also seamless shopping within these videos? And if yes, could we talk? <laughs> Thank you for your question. Just to make sure, you're asking if we are planning on including live shopping as well into our app as a feature? Yeah, or shoppable videos in a way that you can directly buy the products out of the stream, not only like looking at the video and yeah. the, like just how the product works, but also have like a more interactive experience. Yeah, yeah. So we are not planning on um, introducing live shopping just yet. We do find that e-commerce marketplaces are having a hard time navigating and motivating merchants to add videos. And we're super focused on just videos. But live shopping is definitely something that we've been A-B testing and trying to see if this is an option. But right now, we're still in the early stages where live shopping is something that we'd want to address in a couple of years' time. Yeah. All right. Well, but very, you. very exciting topic as well. Yeah. Well, well then let's uh, connect maybe. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Ambika. I'm a um, sustainable fashion influencer. So I just wanted to know, you mentioned earlier that um, you tie up with influencers as well for events and things. How do you scope who to work with? What's your strategy there? Sorry, how do we scope what? How do you scope who you want to work with? What's your strategy there? Yeah, so we have a whole team around that, right? So for every room, for example, 
every room that we show there at the World of Wish in London. Um, we first look at the products that we want to portray and showcase. And from those products on, we work with different agencies and different contacts that we have in the, in the social, media plat uh, social media platform and sphere to kind of see what fits. So for every room, we had different influencers that would fit better into, let's say, the bridal shower room versus the fluffy Klarna room. Yeah, so we individually pick influencers we work with that would fit to our product and also really fit to our consumers because their followers are the ones that are going to watch those stories and we ideally want their followers to be wish consumers. Yeah. And um, are you only scouting through, um, as you said, agencies or does your team also look at independent influencers? Independent as well. Right. Independent as well. Yeah, for okay. sure. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, um, Hi, I'm Frederic. I uh, work for e-commerce store. I wanted to ask if you have been trying interactive videos in your store or your marketplace. Interactive videos? Um, well, in terms of interactive, what we offer is when those videos are displayed, uh, consumers can press different buttons in order to come to a more detailed product page. Um, I'm not sure what you define as interactive video. Yeah, I think yeah. that's pretty much it. Uh, just like I maybe wanted you to uh, tell me a bit more about how that's working for you. If it's really like helping the, the purchase funnel for the customer or... It, yeah, it definitely simplifies the purchase path way more for consumers. Yeah, because they see the product in live and they just know what they can do with it. And then once they actually watch the videos, then they, uh, we see our consumers uh, spend a lot more time on the product page actually reading through the description before buying the product. Yeah, so the click-through rate is definitely much better as well. But happy to discuss in detail at our booth and then we can talk a bit more numbers. Yeah. Have you seen an effect on customer service from this? Like by using the interactive videos, do you, have you seen like less customer contacts? Sorry? Have you seen uh, less customer contacts when you've started using these interactive videos? No, more no. customer contact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, more sure. purchases or yes. more actual like questions yes. to customer well, service. Yeah, what we look at, for example, is the conversion rate that improved, right? So in terms of number of customers, we're super interested in having our cus customers have a great experience and a positive experience. And that is really what we're focused on. So in terms of number of us customers, we're really looking at how are they enjoying their purchase path on Wish and what can we do to better that purchase path. And that's really where videos helped us a lot. All right, thank you. Yeah, thanks.